I grew up on Lookout Mountain, Georgia and went to high school at Rossville High School in Rossville, Georgia. The town and the school are both named after Chief John Ross, whose house stands there in the middle of, of Rossville. John Ross was a noted Cherokee chief during a pivotal time of American history and of the history of the Cherokee. I knew a lot about John Ross, but only a few years ago I learned of his involvement as a Methodist. And it's an interesting story. The Methodists have been interested in, or had been interested in reaching out to Native Americans since the beginning of the Methodist movement. John Wesley came to Georgia in 1735, among other reasons, to help spread the word, to preach the gospel, to convert, if possible, the Native Americans. Needless to say, that trip turned out a little differently than, than he thought it would, but the die was cast and the, and the Methodist circuit riders and the beginning of Methodism in this country were always interested in reaching out to the Native Americans in their, in their area. In the Holston area, that meant the Cherokee. In 1800, William Lambeth was appointed in the Holston area to the, serve as the missionary to the Indians in the wilds of Tennessee. In 1827, John McFerrin, a famous name in Holston, was appointed missionary to the Cherokee. Noted Cherokee speakers and pastors included, around that time, Turtle Fields, Arch Campbell, and John Fletcher Booth. The Methodists were also involved in many of the missions that were taking place both in the Brainerd area around what's now Chattanooga, as well as Spring Place and other mission schools in North Georgia. Holston Conference officially took up the Cherokee work in 1835 when it was transferred in from the Tennessee Conference. And that year in 1835, appointments were listed for Holston Cherokee missions in Western North Carolina, in the Washington District, which includes Chattanooga and Bradley County and the Sequatchie Valley, and as far south as Calhoun and Lafayette in North Georgia. This area of North Georgia was known as the Newtown District. It became a district in Holston in 1835. The Holston Conference actually met there for annual conference, the only time they did that in Georgia in 1840 in Lafayette. But in 1835, there were reportedly 521 Indians, as the records say, on the Holston Conference records for that year. Early Methodist circuit riders were popular with um, the Cherokee and the numbers grew rapidly. As one author said, the circuit riders had no large mission establishments, but they, vote, they rode from village to village on horseback, sleeping in the cabins of the Cherokee, sharing their food and treating them as equals. John Ross experienced some of that treatment and some of the positive interactions with early Methodists from Holston Conference. For John, for John Ross, his experience with Holston Conference Methodism was a mixed blessing in many ways. His niece was an enthusiastic class leader in the Rossville area. She married a Methodist circuit rider. He, John Ross himself was converted by the John, Reverend John McFerrin, was baptized, and in 1829, he and his brother both signed in the records from that time that they were seeking to be Methodist seekers. John Ross supported Methodist preachers, supported Methodist, pre hosted Methodist preaching in his house, not only in what's now Rossville, but also his other house in North Georgia and even in the Oklahoma Territory. John Ross and the other early Cherokee would find much positive in Methodism and in their interaction with the people of Holston. But Methodists were also among the great numbers of new arrivals who coveted the Cherokee lands in Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama, and supported President Jackson's efforts to move the Cherokee out west. A few years later, in the late 1830s, John Ross, Turtle Fields, and other Cherokees would join together along with some of those missionaries and some of those circuit riders and travel on the Trail of Tears to Oklahoma. Several of them died on the trail. Ross's wife died as well. Thousands of Cherokee and Cherokee Methodists passed away on that journey. And yet, after arriving in the Oklahoma Territory, one of the first things that John Ross did was to authorize the creation of a Methodist preaching station in that territory. His house still stands in Rossville as a reminder to us of both the marvelous things that missionaries did in the early days of Holston, but also of the somewhat troubling history we have 
in our relations with the native peoples.